Hi, I'm Douglas Booth, and I'm in studio with The Hollywood Reporter, and The Dirt is streaming on Netflix now. Thanks so much for stopping by. Thank you for having me. Congrats on The Dirt. Thank you very much. Now that it's been out, what have the reactions been about the film, about people, for people who have seen it? For people who have seen it, um, so, so far, I've, the only people I've, I've kind of really spoke to about it is, like, close friends and family. I watched it with my parents, and that was, that oh, was a was crazy reaction. My, my parents absolutely loved it. Yeah. Uh, I think they found the, the heroin use uh, in the movie quite hard. I think that was the hardest part for them. I could see my seeing your own son just really sinking to a very, like, an absolute low in psychosis, you know, taking so much heroin, a thousand dollars a day of heroin a day. Uh, that was pretty hard for them to watch, but... Overall, everyone's loved it. It's it's a it's a it's a really fun ride of a movie, but it's also a window into a very different time that is fascinating. But and kind of a cautionary tale of what it is like to um, to fly too close to the sun and crash and burn. Because um, they really they had everything and they lost it all as well. So it's, it's that's a great way to put it. Yeah. Now, is the Motley Crew a group of people you'd want to hang out with today? Definitely. In what ways? Yeah, definitely. I mean, they're also they're all very different. Uh, Nicky is, you know, a very changed man from the man he was before. He's he's sober now, um, but still an artist and still very focused. And he cares so much about this movie. So it's been really fun to um, spend some time with him making this film. Tommy Lee, you can't help but fall in love with him. He's just he wears his heart on his sleeve, and he's such a lovable guy. And again, been so welcoming and supportive and complimentary about the film. I hung out with Vince and Mick briefly. Uh, we were the Grand Marshals at the NASCAR race, oh, which was awesome. which was fun. Um, and Vince, yeah, again was you know I hadn't met him before, and he was you know very, really polite and and really kind of pleased with what we did with the film, which was great. And Mick is just like he's he's such a charming man, but says very little. Yeah. Um, like just like just too. like in the yeah, film. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's cool. They're all, they're all very different from the way they were back then, but they also kind of. I'm still the same person in a way. Now, Nikki has kind of talked about wanting to do a film on all of them, but he wanted it to be in the right way. How do you think The Dirt has achieved that? Well, I think it was about, you know, the, the Motley Crue sold over 100 million albums, so many, and there's so many fans that know this this story inside and out, and I guess we wanted to service that for the, for the fans, but also tell this story for a whole new, new generation yeah. of people that didn't know that, and, you know... I was born in 92, I missed, I Same. missed, yeah, oh, okay, so we were both born in 92, and we missed this era, um, and it's, so it's, it's, it's a fun window into, like, a completely different exotic time, because rock and roll stars aren't like this anymore, people don't behave like that anymore, rightly so, but it is, it's, you know, it, it, it you know, an era, you know, the end of the 70s with Studio 54, or the Blitz Club in London, I played Boy George in a biopic about his life, and, yeah. you know, the window with the New Romantics, and, like, Bowie at that time, and what, all these artists... And these icons from that era, they lived in a very, in a crazy way, which is entertaining to watch, I would say. But um, yeah, definitely a cautionary tale. You know, I don't think Adele is doing that these days. I love Adele, by the way. She's my favorite. What's your favorite Adele song? Um, oh God, what's the uh, the one that I got stuck in my head for about five weeks was Hello, that one. But I I'm not I can't remember really name many of them, but I I, I, lo- I love I love watch watch their glass. Shout out to Adele. Season. Shout out to Adele. You're great at Glastonbury. Speaking of music, when was the first time you heard uh, the Motley Crue? Do you remember? Um, I don't remember. I feel like I've heard it many times because yeah. um, they're such a part of like eighties rock music culture. But I, I, I wasn't necessarily a fan, and it wasn't until I kind of really started playing these songs with this group of people and becoming these people and getting a chance to walk into an arena and play it in front of thousands of people with massive pyrotechnics and massive flame cannons and stuff like that, I realized the power of what it could be, you know, and, it, and, and they've got some really catchy tunes. Do you have a favorite song from them? Wild Side is probably my favorite. Yeah. Um, and then to perform Shout at the Devil was fun because it was the first time the crew had played to such a big audience when they played that song and in the film, it's so epic when they first come out. They're so nervous to go on stage. They think they're going to mess it up. And then they go out there and the crowd embrace them. And you can just see it on their faces and they just get into it. And the rest is history. They become this massive uh, arena playing, world touring band. Uh, what were your musical talents before joining the project? I interviewed Daniel about kind of his and he didn't really have um, many of you. I, I didn't play guitar. Yeah. I like I played a tiny bit in a film ages ago. But I played the trumpet. Um, Imagine like, Nikki six playing that. Yeah, can you imagine? <laughs> I played the trumpet from the age from the age of like eleven to maybe even younger. No, younger. I was in primary school, so probably like eight yeah. until 
17 and then it but I kind of stopped playing really when I was 14, 15 because I always wanted to be a jazz musician my, my grandparents listened to Louis Armstrong but then kids started picking up guitars and joining rock bands and, and suddenly it wasn't very cool for me to come to a party and like pick up the trumpet but now it's the coolest thing ever to be able to do that I wish I'd kept that up in creating the style of the Motley Crue, obviously hair was important to them. What was it like working with the wig, and did you keep the wig at all? Uh, I, I wish I could keep the wig, uh, but these wigs are like worth like fifteen, twenty thousand oh, dollars. They're like they're so expensive. They make them. It's like literally hair. They they cast your head, and they hair by hair, do it so specifically. And we had um, Morgan, our great uh, hair designer. She did such an incredible job, and it was so important to us because. It is so easy for this to look cheesy, corny, badly done. Um, so kind of was make or break on the hair. And, and Nikki still has the same hair today. Nikki still has the same hair. It's yeah. still like teased this big. You don't, we wouldn't want to be sitting next to him, behind him at the premiere, I tell you that. Was there anything about the wardrobe that you were able to keep in, I or tried, from the set? I'm hoping still, because I on the last day, there's the pants that I wear on the Girls, Girls, Girls tour, and they're like leather pants, and yeah. they have like a built-in like denim patch here with like red crisscrossing, and they're so iconic. And they, I just loved them. And I thought I could definitely use these for fancy dress one day or something. Well, no, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe come, may come, may come back into, you. Into, you know, maybe we'll come back into fashion. Instead, but I tried, right. I tried to take them. I was like, the customer, I was like, can I take these? She's like, yeah, just do it. But then I got a call from the producer, Eric. He's like, dude, you got to give the pants back because they keep everything in a warehouse in case you need to do reshoots. Um, yeah. But I, yeah, I'd love to give them a home because I always will just sit there and rock something. Rock, you're going to rock them yeah. around. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. for sure. Um, for you, though, what was it like playing this rock legend, but also this troubled rock legend. And you mentioned your family had a difficult time watching his drug addiction and... Yeah, I feel like, you know, it, it's, you know, it, it, it's what's interesting as, and exciting as an actor, I guess, to play yeah. these these troubled characters because that is the, um, you know, that, that that's that's the meaty stuff that we love to get our teeth into and, you know, someone with so many different layers. I mean, originally I was going to play, to I, I thought I was going to play Tommy Lee at the beginning. Okay. I wanted to play, I, I, that's the one I first auditioned for. And then eventually they were like, would you audition for Nikki? We think you could actually really be right for Nikki. And I was like, oh God, he's a very kind of, com he's slightly more complex and you can't quite put your finger on him as easy as, as Tommy. Tommy's quite, you know, you, every, you see everything, everything's right there in front of you and you see it. But Nikki, he's much more introverted and inside and in his head. Um, and again, has had the, the worst of the addiction problems that is the tricky stuff for him and his life is the interesting stuff for us to play yeah. yeah and in the film when they're kind of exploring his drug addiction you kind of see it he's your narrator and obviously and he says i met my first love and then he's talking about heroin can you mm -hmm. kind of talk about filming that and kind of setting the story up for that yeah he fell in love with heroin quick and fast and it, it you know it was uh he was in like such a dark place that he was doing it on tour and you know he the plane would land when he'd get back and his dealer would pick him up from the airport and he'd be getting, he'd be shooting up in the car on the way home um he you know he was doing a thousand dollars of heroin a day but for but for us to film that i mean the the technical side was i wanted to lose weight because he he kind of was very thin at those he wasn't really eating much he was sort of just consistent taking heroin and crack so that was his kind of main diet um not a good diet. yeah not a very good diet <laughs> no. so i wanted to lose a bit of weight for that so we shot that at the beginning and that was um so that was one side of it and then we kind of just, we shot it all in like two days and just, I, but we basically locked, locked ourselves in this really dark room and they kind of gave me, a lot of the stuff they gave me freedom to just be like, okay, here's his space, we're just gonna film you. Yeah. And so I had the, the unpleasure of sort of just Getting crawl, crawling around this space, like injecting in different parts of my body at different times and kind of, you know, I, I, I'd read a lot about the Heron Diaries, his book about which yeah. chronicles, um, what he was going through in those moments and the psychosis and the thinking he was being robbed or the police were coming to get him and him like running and going through his drawers looking for a gun and defending himself against people that weren't there and voices in his head. So it was it was kind of a dark uh, moment in the filming of that. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I, you, as soon as we finished, I had to go and do a scene that was like set two decades later. So you just got to snap right out of it. Of it yeah. yeah, when he was sober. So... Now, this film obviously means so much to him. What has he said to you about your performance and your portrayal of him? He, um, well, the first time he, I remember it was like four weeks after shooting and he reached out to me. He, he texted me going, he'd seen, he'd gone into this uh, editing suite and he'd seen like... So there weren't conversations prior to filming? Oh, no, no. I, oh, met, I met him before, before and he came to set yeah. while we were doing a band, band practice. Okay. And he actually, and he texted me on the regular being like, 
oh, this is how you do this bass riff. I hold my guitar like this and just give me like mini tutorials via yeah, text. Yeah. It would That's just be awesome. him filming like in his hotel room and that was very cool. That's really cool. He would like send me guitars. He would send me like, he was always just, he was just so generous in that sense. Um, but yeah, afterwards he texted me going, dude, he was like, I just saw, I just saw some of the scenes and he was so excited and pleased. And I guess I would be, if I was having someone play me relieved, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's going it's to be a very uh, uh, unnerving thing kind of, relinquishing your life story to someone else. Um, but I was just so glad he's pleased, and I think everyone in the band is. There are obviously a lot of crazy moments in the film because their life was insane. What was your reaction to hearing some of those stories? You know, the meeting Ozzy Osbourne and the story of the ants. Can you kind of talk oh. about That's, That's a true story, Nikki said. Yeah, it is a true story. Um, I think that was a, a scene that a lot of the fans were very excited to see. Yeah. It's such an infamous scene. And Tony, the, the actor that actually plays it, is so unbelievably Aussie. uncanny. Yeah, yeah he's insane. literally Aussie. And he smashed it out of the park. That was a really fun day of shooting to just... Because it was that scene that everyone, like so many people have heard, heard, and to see it play out, and he just came storming. We shot the bit before he came out, and then he came out, and it was just like, we hadn't really seen him do it yet, and he just came out, and he was Aussie, and we were just like, all of us actors were like, whoa. Um, yeah, it was good. that was good. That was a fun one, too. Um, to film. Um, I want to ask you, obviously there are a lot of fun moments in the film when you guys are wrecking the hotel, causing mayhem in the streets. Can you kind of talk about the filming of those? And When it came down the line to the funny stuff of running around hotel rooms together, like smashing stuff up and all those irresponsible things. Did you guys feel like you were the new age Molly crew, in a sense? Yeah, yeah. I, you don't, you don't, don't get to behave like that anymore. No. So um, it, was, it was our little slice of 80s uh, debauchery and it was, it was fun. You know, to have a whole group of adults set up a room purely so you can destroy it, it's quite a fun thing. Insane. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think Nikki thinks of the music being produced today, kind of? I don't know. Has he said anything about it? Or? I mean, I, I, I don't want to talk for him, um, but he... I, I think I think he's unimpressed with certain things, yeah. but also he's kind of... He's very open-minded and progressive in that sense and, and loves a lot of things that are happening and keeps up... Uh, keeps up up with all of them, um, but I remember I asked him his favorite band. I interviewed him for for a music magazine. Yeah. Um, but his most of, most of his favorite movie, music is music that inspired him in that. In era. Era. Was it? I think Aerosmith was his favorite, which is quite funny. Yeah. That is really funny. Yeah, you guys were all reunited uh, last Monday for the mm -hmm. premiere. What did you guys celebrate, Motley Crue style, about the release of the film? Um, yeah, I mean we we start we we celebrate in the style of we went to the Whiskey Go Go, which is you know heavily featured in the movie um, and that was cool and we had a female uh, Motley Crue cover band play which was also That's really awesome. cool and the crew absolutely loved they they was they were so stoked on that Tommy was at the front of the front of the stage head banging and so that was very cool and we it was amazing to get what was most special on Monday was actually screening the movie at the at the iconic uh, Arclight Arc Light Dome um, in front of 800 people on this massive screen with the crew there and to see it see them watch their life play out in front of their eyes and kind of I kept looking across the auditorium and looking at them that must have been a trippy experience for them to be all together again yeah. after not really seeing each other for many years since they last toured That's with so us insane. here yeah. so many fans in the audience um, that was that was really that was the best thing now what has stuck with you most since after filming about playing Nikki um, I mean you you take a bit of every character with you forever, I think, in, in a way. Um, and uh, I guess the experience of being a band, you know, it's such, sometimes it's a, you're on a lonely quest as an actor, you're, you're, you're moving from job to yeah, job. Yeah, I was gonna say, it to... And you make great friends and then you get pulled away in different directions and you make families and, and then you get pulled away with the crew and, you know, you all become really close, so. I know the experience of being like jo joined with three other guys so intensely and making a piece of work we're incredibly proud of. We're, we're, we are actually we're all very uh, proud Should of this be. film. Yeah. And um, I don't know. It's just yeah that 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 kinship is something that I think I'm going to take away. That's so great. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. This was great. Make sure you check out the dirt now on Netflix.